So Jimmy Buffett Missile Crisis was a folk punk band that I started with uh, two other people, one of them who's now my wife. Um, we started it back in 2017, mm -hmm. and uh, it was just a joke name. Um, there was one folk punk band called Andrew Jackson Jihad, and that kind of played into it. <laughs> Six, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and this guy. I met my guest at Chiba Hut during one of the acoustic nights that's put on by uh, Scotty Dub over there on uh, Rainbow and Sahara. And uh, my guest has made quite a journey from Vegas to San Francisco to New Orleans to Arizona and back to Vegas. Please welcome to the channel, Jack Moreau. How's it going? Hey. So, wanted to first of all ask you. How did that whole trend, I, I understand that San Francisco was basically, I need to get out of here, I've reached a certain age and I want to leave, right? It's the old, the tried and true story. Yeah. You know, this teenager, he's like, I'm gone. How'd you get to San Francisco? Was it strictly hitchhiking? Yeah, yeah, um, hitchhiking, wow. up, uh, hitchhiking up Highway 1. Um, as soon as I turned oh, 18, wow. I just, uh, you know, you hear about a lot of, uh, People that are like, oh, after high school, I'm going to go backpack across Europe or do something like that. I backpacked across my own country. Nice. Right. So there were more places than just San Francisco, New Orleans, and, and Arizona? Oh, yeah, definitely. I hitchhiked. The first time I ever went traveling, I hitchhiked up Highway 1 from Venice all the way up to Northern California. And then uh, made my way back to Vegas and then went east all the way down to Arizona and just kind of traveled on and off from there. It's a lot scarier now to do that. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I mean, I haven't done it in a few years. Um, it went from hitchhiking, and then I started getting into hopping freight trains and stuff like that. An honest Scott hobo. Yep. Welcome. <laughs> uh, by the way, welcome to the channel. Right. Thank you. Clunk. Hmm. Before we go any further, if you would like to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address or the social media link down in the description. That's also where you can find ways to support the channel, such as Room 6 merch, uh, Patreon page, I own CDs, all that jazz. Um, while you're at it, consider subscribing down there. I got some really cool things coming up in the future I don't want you to miss out on. Back to the interview. Who said you're going to end up there or you're going to end up good for nothing troubadour? <laughs> so um, uh, that was actually a Twilight Zone quote that I heard in one of the shows, but it was also one of my grandpa's favorite episodes. And... Uh, he used to say that to me because he always encouraged my music, and uh, he used he used to hop freight during like the Great Depression. So wow, he, so you you come from it honestly. Oh yeah, yeah. So I I told him that's what I want to do. I want to travel and play music, and he told me you're gonna end up dead or you're gonna end up a good for nothing troubadour. <laughs> that's actually a great quote. Oh yeah, I love it. Let's <laughs> try to work that into a song. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Oh yes. Before we get into the kind of the usual interview questions, Jimmy Buffett Missile Crisis? <laughs> so Jimmy Buffett Missile Crisis was a folk punk band that I started with uh, two other people, one of them who's now my wife. Um, we started it back in 2017, mm -hmm. and uh, it was just a joke name. Um, there was one folk punk band called Andrew Jackson Jihad, and that kind of played into it. and. I hated Billy Joel, and our banjo player hated Jimmy Buffett, so I had a friend sing Margaritaville to him, and he went, oh, you're having third parties trying to get involved now? You're going to start a Jimmy Buffett missile crisis. Bing! <laughs> Billy Joel? I didn't like him a lot Mr. at the Piano time. Man? Yeah, I was... Wow. I was, at the time, I was very much like, oh, punk rock, you know, yeah, fuck yeah. corporate rock, and all that stuff. <laughs> it's funny how age tempers certain things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and what's really always amazing to me is that uh, I got a record player and I'm finally work every so often I find like, hey, I'm waiting on a progress bar for editing. Let's put on a record that I've <laughs> never heard of because thanks to my in-laws, thanks to my wife and my own collections over the years, there's stuff I've never heard of and there's stuff that I'm like, I never, I, this is amazing. I didn't know Leonard Nimoy put out an album. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I did know that, but I, I just picked that name out of random. But there are times where I'm hearing something like, hey, dude, 
there's polyrhythms going on. There's some stuff going on. Oh, this, yeah, is, yeah. And this is like from the 50s and 60s. All music is thievery. Nothing is new. <laughs> it's nothing. Like, literally, we all use the same octave for Western music. And I'm sure in, in, in um, Java and Bali, where they play the gamelan, they all use the same, what is, is it 10 notes? I think it's a 10 note octave there. I played in the gamelan during college wow. for one class, and it was amazing. Because <laughs> you're, on your part, your, it, it literally was like every single instrument in there was a music theory class because you had to like, okay, I'm counting 10, he's counting 8, he's counting 9. <laughs> and we all have to be, uh, boom, boom, boom. But, but together, it, it, it really, it, it teaches you to focus as a musician, uh, especially when you grow up with 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, how, I, I normally ask how long you lived in Vegas, but for you, it was kind of like, I started here, now I'm back. Yeah. So for, there was never any question about coming back, right? Um, I kind of just found my way back. Um, I, uh, I came back and in the late winter of 28, 2019. And my plan was to stay for a few months, save up some money to get some gear and mm -hmm. just get back out on the road. But I ended up getting involved with, uh, the punk scene out here a bit more and, uh, falling into bad habits. So it kind of locked me here for a while. Um, and then I drifted out of that and I'm gonna be heading out again. Not not quite the same way, moving to actually build something, find some land, homestead. That's, that's right, that's why you had to, we had to do this interview kind of oh, yeah. quickly after we met. Um, I think camera two died. Just a moment. We're back. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, so we're talking about, you're moving. Yeah. Where? Do you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be moving to Abilene, Texas. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of work out there with a friend and uh, saving up to uh, get my own little chunk of land and uh, eventually, one day in the future, build a cabin, have well water, live off-grid. Raise all the wild dobros you want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all the all the wild guitar crops. <laughs> yeah. Now, I met this gentleman, like I said, performing at Chiba Hut. He played a dobro and a banjo and i've never seen a dobro actually played i've only like in real life i've seen it you know I, I know what it was but it was it was really it was it was awesome um and i talked about it actually in a review i did of that show which is probably there so texas now as you know texas has different parts of texas oh yeah so Scrolling through your social media, there are parts you're probably not to stay away from. <laughs> yeah, um, I've always uh, I've always had a good time in the southern states of America. Um, I'm I'm in love with country music, not the bastardization of what they call country music. Country today. and western. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I uh, you know, I'm a lot of my favorite songwriters came from Texas. Yeah, so I'm definitely influenced by it. I don't. Know. Um, how has sober life changed your songwriting and approach to music? Um, well, I never really wrote too well when I was all, you know, like, fucked up on drugs and alcohol. You thought you did. Yeah, I <laughs> thought I did, or those bad feelings would just all manifest themselves, so when I came out of it was when I would write something about it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I find, uh, that through getting sober and being that way as of nine months, um, it hasn't really changed my writing, because I lived and represented that darkness for close to almost 10 years. Okay. So at this point, I can still write and reflect on it, but not have to live in it. And I can now find other things to write about as well, about the battle of trying to break out of that. So. Well spoken, well said. Um, I, I know what you mean because there, there's the old saying, to write, you need to write what you know. Yeah. And... For me, when you're fresh into college or you're, you know, when you're in your 20s and you're, you know, 18, 19, you think you know what depression is and you think you know what, you know, being alone means and, and sadness and you write your stupid songs. And I literally wrote a song called I'm Lonely. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's like worse than the Justin Bieber Lonely song. <laughs> um, but... Then, you know, you, you after a certain amount of time, you step back and go, hey, you know, 
stuff's not so bad. Hey, I can still tap into certain memories and certain points in my oh. life without having to go back and make those mistakes. Again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's uh, I feel like uh, it's just a part of growing up, and uh, you know, I'm uh, I had to decide one day, like you know, what do I want to be? Like you know, a burnout tramp or an artist? And an artist is who I wanted to be. Right, and and there's a big difference also between being an artist and a product. Yeah. And, and yeah, definitely. You know. Like uh, all the music row, like Nashville, and all the stuff that they're trying to push out is country music these days. Right. Um, you know, they'll new take, country. Yeah, new country. You know, they'll take somebody who's an artist. They'll give them. They'll loan them like two hundred thousand dollars to record this record, and then they'll tour them to death. Mm -hmm. And that's just something that I would never compromise my integrity or anything like that to do. Fortunately, you know. Te technology really has changed the game a lot for that. Oh yeah, you don't need a record label necessarily. Yeah, no. And, and record labels a lot of times want you to like what did where have you already done in terms of you know building a, pres a presence, building a community, um, you know, doing your own recordings. What do you bring? Are, you know, or are you just fresh geek off the street? You know, and, yeah. and, and, and in which case they don't want you a lot of times. It's kind of, in my opinion, the uh, the, the script. Of, Flip the script a little bit. Yeah. It used to be, we want to mold you. And now they're like, we want to take what you've got and then run with it. So Yeah. All right. So I want to talk musical influences because you went from punk to not punk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the earliest musical influence you remember? You know, Little Jack, when, when you know, what was that first song or, or artist or genre where you were like, I want to do that. I want to make music. Well, actually, um, the first was uh, when I first started playing the guitar when I was 11 years old. Uh, my biggest influence and just hero at that time was Johnny Cash. Hey. Yep. Yeah. Biggest influence. And uh, I took it from there, you know. I'm, uh, I got into, like, classic rock kind of stuff for a while. You got it. You got a guitar. And then one day I heard the Dead Kennedys. And I was like, oh, oh. get all this old people shit out of here. You know, I'm going to spike my hair and kick over people's trash cans and... You know, just be a little punk kid, and uh, um, and it was fun, and you know, I did it for a long time, and it's still a big part of who I am. Right. Um, but I found later, um, I got into like harder punk and metal punk, and then like folk punk, and then through that, I got into actual folk music and country music, and I found uh, playing more like an outlaw country style as a more refined way of expressing that punk attitude. So that leads me to. I, I, I hate asking this question. Forgive me for asking this question. But how would you describe your musical style? Elevator pitch. Go. <laughs> uh, my musical style. Um, would you call it outlaw country? Or? Um, I think it has elements of it. Um, I would also just call it folk or dark country. Dark country? Oh, I haven't heard that one yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm picturing like Johnny Cash, but like. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I think what got me into like the darker stuff was definitely uh, uh, Hank Williams right. and Hank the Third as and, well. And for you, especially you younger viewers, if you don't know Hank Williams and, and Johnny Cash and younger Willie Nelson, there's right. they they went through some shit. They, they, there's some darkness in those those songs, and especially if you're sitting there with a you know a whiskey and you're listening <laughs> to the songs, you're like, man, oh yeah, get it. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, his version, or Johnny Cash's version of Hurt. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, excellent. I mean, regardless of what you think of Trent Reznor or Nine Inch Nails uh, as, as a project, that song, I, I liked the song. That came out, though. He definitely made it his own thing. And, and also Rusted Cage with Sound. Yeah. Uh, Rusted Cage came out first, I think. Yeah. And I was like, well, what? <laughs> no, mind blown. Johnny Cash, song yard. But then he did Hurt, and you're just like, what am I doing with my song? Yeah. What am I doing? <laughs> I should be writing. I should be playing. Um, the other, one of the other artists that always makes me feel like I should be practicing or working on a new instrument or something right now is Sting. Oh, really? Dude plays a lot of instruments. Him and Dolly Parton. Yeah, no, yeah, Dolly. In a two-hour two hour show, she, she still puts on, she do like nine instruments. Wow. Yeah, you're just like, you know, <laughs> the queen, go for it. Um, okay, cool. So, you would say dark country, mostly. Yeah. All right. From there, I want to talk about um, how long have you been performing, like just as Jack Moreau? 
Um, this, this is a new thing for me. Um, I just played as a street musician for a lot of years, just busking on the street corners, trying to make a dollar. Saw a picture. Yeah, trying to make a dollar to eat at the Chinese buffet that night. Mm -hmm. um, uh, or, you know, just playing on the street to have fun. And uh, I was heavily involved in that culture for a while. Um, COVID kind of did away with a lot of it. Thanks, COVID. Um, uh, I used to walk around downtown areas of different cities, and you'd always see, you know, that the crusty kid culture busking on the streets and you don't see it a lot anymore and it saddens me but uh yeah um it, it the buskers are still there but now they're you know practically a union yeah definitely <laughs> i uh yeah but uh this is um i'm putting out a solo ep soon so well i'd love to review it so. yeah definitely so, it's uh so it's in mixing work. right now um it's coming out on uh xdx lab publishing what's um, it called um it's called broken tunes broken tunes you heard it here so I will um, love to re I, I'd love to review it. Send it my way. I'll put out a, a video of it and uh, definitely link it. Um, and we we're almost done. You mean it? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> how did I do it? <laughs> <laughs> you just stood there and drank. Right. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you kind of a weird question. Something I've, I've started asking. I used to say, um, you know, let's pretend we're talking a little Jack. What do you wish someone had told you when you first got into making music? Your path's been a little different than most people. So instead, I wanted to say, if you could change one thing about the Las Vegas music scene, good or bad, what would it be? Um, whew, that is a good question. That's why I asked you. Um, <laughs> if I would change one thing, I would get rid of the clicky aspect of it, um, especially the Las Vegas punk rock music scene. It's, uh, you know, it's one of those fashion contests, you know, uh, there's a uniform. Yeah. It's, uh, you're more, almost more, wearing it <laughs> more of a mental uniform. It's, uh, you know, you know, this guy knows this guy. And if you say something that guy didn't agree with, now five people hate you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Try being on social media. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's it's <laughs> social media in live reality. <laughs> um, the, yeah, I mean, the metal scene has that too, of course. Yeah. Um, you, sometimes you're like, am I in high school still? Like, yeah. What happened? Exactly. Um, I agree. I think the only click should be we're all original musicians. Exactly. And we're all dealing with the same crap. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. I'm... Uh, yeah, you know, Las Vegas is definitely my hometown. Um, I called it home, but uh, yeah, one thing I'd like to see is just maybe like a bigger resurgence of the music scene because it used to thrive out here for better, for worse, whatever that means. But, yeah, I, I definitely feel like I'm in a position to say this. I feel that it's it's definitely on its way back. Yeah, and the only limitation really will be what 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 the scene puts on itself. You know, if you guys Let's learn from the mistakes of the past a little bit in terms of what was keeping the scene from really, really exploding uh, like it used to be here. Um, and part of that is don't don't play for nothing unless you want to. Yeah. You know? Don't if don't 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 play for exposure. You know if 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 you're like I'm, I want to play this. It's a good time. I have I I you know oh, yeah. play with my friends and you know we network and stuff. That's fine. But but. So don't sell yourself short. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so stick around, by the way. Uh, he's going to go up to room six, do a song off the new EP. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, the it's upcoming gonna, EP. It's going to definitely be off the new EP. <clears throat> Should be out in about one and a half to two weeks, maybe three. Giggity. Cool. In the meantime, we'll say temporarily thank you very much for watching. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. And we'll see you upstairs in room six. Later. All right, my name is Jack Moreau, and this song is called Last Dime on the Line. I'm always trying to live my head up high. Just can't seem to see the clouds with the tears in my wandering eyes. 
When I hear the call of death, she sounds like a long lost friend. Seems the hard luck road is at its end. In the time of blowing lines and staying up for days, had one foot in the county jail and another one in the grave. So now I'm coming down, no more long nights on the town, and I will be better soon, I'll be better soon. Sold my soul for the cheapest thrills A bottle of baggy and a handful of pills If that don't hush the scream and that torments my head They'll all be laughing when I'm dead In the time of blowing lines and staying up for days Had one foot in the county jail and another one in the grave So now I'm coming down No more long nights on the town And I will be better soon I'll be better soon So now the night is over, my heart's beating out of time Dug myself right in the ground while I was chasing the final round Sat in that bar stool and gave away my only dime In this whiskey river, I know I'm gonna drown In the time of blowing lines and staying up for days Had one foot in the county jail and another one in the grave So now I'm coming down No more long nights on the town And I will be better soon I'll be better soon coming down no more long nights on the town and i will be better soon i'll be better soon i want to thank jack moreau for coming by it was a great interview and great performance if you want to know more about him i've got links down in the description to all his social social media say the words and uh in the meantime like I said, if you want to be on the channel, hit me up using my email or the social media link. Also, if you want to support the channel, that's where you can find ways to support the channel. If you want to see more videos like this, please click up there. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it really would make a difference. Please click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Jack. See you. Have a good one. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.